three, two, one. Hello and welcome. My name is Barry Canty, SVP of Marketing at IBEX, and I'm happy to have you with us for today's webinar, which is titled, How AI is Revolutionizing Contact Center and CX Performance. In today's conversation, we're going to delve into the transformative power of AI in the contact center. Joining me today are three members of the IBEX team. First up is our CIO, Jim Ferrato. How's it going, Jim? Very good, Barry. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here. Uh, next up is our SVP of Channel Partnerships, Michael Thigpen. Hey, Michael. Hey, Barry. Hey, everybody. Looking forward to our combo. And uh, last is the newest member of the IBEX team, uh, Eric Guaro, who is our head of AI strategy and implementation. Welcome, Eric. Hey, Barry. How you doing? Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Great to have you. Uh, so quickly, for those of you who have not been on an IBEX webinar in the past, IBEX is a tech-driven BPO, and we deliver CX solutions to the world's top brands across all verticals. We have a network of 31 nearshore, offshore, and onshore centers, and we have a team of over 32,000 CX professionals. And very quickly, a few housekeeping items. Uh, we encourage you to engage with our speakers during the broadcast, so please use that Q&A button on your screen to submit questions. Uh, we did have some great questions come in during registration, so we'll try to get to as many of those as possible. And just a reminder that we will be sharing a recording of this broadcast with those of you who registered, those of you who attended, so you can circulate amongst your organizations and, and learn more about IBEX's thoughts regarding AI strategy in the contact center. And with that out of the way, gentlemen, let's uh, let's jump into the conversation. So I think uh, just to set the table uh, for our viewers, uh, the CX leaders who are watching, um, can you talk to us about the current state of AI and CX and why it's becoming so important for brands and for customers? Eric, I'll come to you first. Yeah, absolutely. And a great question. You know, I would say AI has rapidly become a strategic necessity for companies in the CX industry. It allows businesses to provide better customer experiences, increased operational efficiencies, and gain a massive competitive edge over those who are not utilizing it. Awesome, thanks, Eric. And and Jim, you wanna add your perspective? Sure, uh, you know, AI in the call centers, you know, it's really been a work in progress. It started very early on, there was a lot of promise. It's, you know, it's being used in a number of areas already within call centers, but with this latest iteration of generative AI, and large language models that are able to handle context and much more of a conversational uh, engagement. What we're finding is our clients are really starting to leverage the power of AI in, in terms of creating a very personalized uh, experience for their customers, 24 by seven. Uh, in addition, you know, you, you're able to drive incredible insights out of those engagements so as you iterate your customer experience, it becomes a data-driven exercise that uh, allows you to very, very quickly tailor that customer experience uh, as, you know, you release new products or you find issues in your, uh, say, your supply chain. So very, very interactive 24 by 7 uh, solution for engaging customers. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. And Michael, from your perspective, um, as you collaborate with the technology partners in the CX industry, what are some of your thoughts on AI? You know, look, Barry, I would say that the big change is that I've been in, you know, the industry for a while, right? And and before when we looked at it, it was really about bolting on different parts of AI and, and bringing it in as just a segment of the business. Now, with you know, kind of looking at it with technology, I should say, we're now looking at it to put it across multiple things and multiple things are happening at one time. And I say, it's about the ecosystem, right? Being able to utilize the intelligence from all your different tools versus just one or kind of a segmented environment. And that's where I see the evolution of AI really taking a helm and how I love the way IBEX is taking that direction um, with it. Great, great. And often when we talk about uh, AI in the contact center, uh, it, the focus is on the opportunities it presents. So if I could just go around the horn and Eric, we'll come back to you. 
Uh, in your opinion, what are some of the top opportunities uh, that AI creates for CX leaders? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll hit that, and I think I'll probably uh, just add a little more color to what Jim already discussed here. Um, data driven insights and and analytics is is at the core of everything, and AI really enables you to collect a vast amount of data in real time. And then you really are able to identify those opportunities and go tackle them without a whole lot of legwork. Um, you know, the other one for me is really about around improving the customer experience and efficiencies. It's putting those tools in our agents and customers' hands to solve their issues um, much faster than you were able to previously. We really refer to that as putting a value on our customers' time, which we believe is critical in terms of you know, the amount of time you spend with any brand. Great, great. Michael, uh, Jim, any thoughts, uh, biggest opportunities? Sure. So, you know, it's, people tend to focus, you know, with, with the AI buzz and contact centers around, you know, reducing the need for agents. There are so many other opportunities for AI within the contact center space that drive cost savings, that drive agent engagement, um, you know, as you think about uh, the agent life cycle, you know, you can implement AI all the way across that life cycle from the hiring uh, side of things to co uh, coaching, training, uh, and and the process to bring that agent uh, up to speed very, very quickly. You know, with AI, agents are going to tend to get much more complex uh, interactions so what AI does is gives you the ability to, to add tools like agent assist, where, you know, you get next best action, um, AI driven coaching, so that agents who are now handling much more complex uh, uh, situations can really add value to the equation and feel much, much more comfortable in delivering a, a great solution. No, that's great. And, you know, something I think maybe we should focus a little bit uh, more on here is the positive impact on the employee experience that AI uh, will bring. Um, can you guys talk a little bit about uh, the benefits there? Sure. Um, you know, it, it really starts in the hiring process. You know, we're leveraging AI to really uh, create a very, very accurate uh, job simulation so we know the people that we're hiring are, you know, there's no surprises when they join the company, right? We're, we are using AI to match candidates with specific, uh, client, uh, job profiles. So it starts off there. And then as you go into training using AI based training simulators that have gamification, you know, you're really creating that muscle memory so that Agents are feeling, you know, secure in their skills. Uh, and then when they get out on the floor, you are um, you know, leveraging AI technology to make sure they've got the right information in hand, whether it's an AI searchable knowledge base or an escalation tool. And then the coaching becomes very, very um, specific and tailored to each individual employee. So they're feeling a little bit more valued. You know, they feel like they have, uh, you know, an opportunity to contribute and learn within that organization. So consequently, we're seeing, you know, attrition rates uh, get much better. You know, the more we add tools that drive that customer, uh, rather, uh, employee engagement. I would That's probably great. just add, you know, Jim, just I wanted to quickly say something you also that made me just kind of not so much a, a uh, scientific topic, but I would just say the other part of what that's giving is that information we're getting up front that AI collected, you know, it allow what I love about IBEX too is the level up internally, right? We can use that information to see where that agent skill set may fit to be a manager, to go into other campaigns, to grow, to, to move forward. And, you know, before that information is lost when you had it on paper back in the day, right? It was kind of lost to the abyss and you had to learn it through their performance management. But being able to look at that skill set up front, have that information and be able to do something with it today with the AI we have, I mean, it's that's incredible milestones. Awesome. 
Great, guys. So so let's move on a little bit here in the conversation. Um, based on some of the inbound uh, questions we received, many of the, of the folks on this webinar are looking for advice regarding where and how to begin their AI journeys. Uh, so starting with you, Eric, uh, could you lay out kind of what, in your opinion, is the ideal path forward for CX leaders to start leveraging AI? Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a loaded question for sure, but I'll I'll definitely give you know maybe maybe what I see as the top four. So I think first and foremost, you have to assess your current state. You have to understand where you're starting, where are your customers in that journey, where is your company in that journey. Then a very close second is defining your goals and objectives, both short and long term. What do you want to get out of AI? And then what you start to do is build the plan around those two things. Um, third, I would say, if you're not going to support it 100% internally, selecting a partner that really understands the customer. This is not just about technology. The critical piece comes in where you infuse the technology. So understanding how to fully map out that customer journey and where to interject those AI technologies to better support your customers as they serve themselves. Great, thanks. Thanks, uh, Jim, Michael, anything to add to that? Uh, I think Eric covers it really well. I think the, you know, the key when you look at a partner is, you know, do they have the tools and the expertise to provide that feedback in, you know, a, AI driven feedback in a real time environment. So you, you're very, very quickly able to, uh, assess that, that current customer experience. And so it kind of informs you on as you look at what your ultimate customer experience is, you know, <clears throat> how do you get there? You know, we regularly do complexity analysis, friction analysis, uh, around the current experience. And that's very, very important to inform where you want to take your, your ideal experience. I really would back up just to say something that I keep hearing Jim and Eric say, right? The customer experience, but it's also when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it from the technology, right? I'm looking at what that technology can do and how much we can scale that. And I would say that's also important. We see a lot of cool bells and whistle tools and things, and there's a lot of good ones out there. Look, take time to look at, you know, what does it take to build it? What are the requirements? What are, am I going to be able to put this into my main CRM or my CCAS and be able to scale this and, and keep this something repeatable long term as I add other technologies on? And that's a lot of times we forget that some of those, some of these tools are only able to do certain things in certain ways. And I think having that ability with teams like Eric and Jim's IT team to be able to look at that and do that um, type of propensity analysis and customer journey mapping really gives us the ability to come back and give pointed, tailored type of custom um, opportunities to them. Yeah, oh, that's great. That's great. And you you all have made sort of indirect reference to this, but maybe we'll focus on it a little bit. Uh, what role do you see business intelligence playing uh, in regard to integrating more AI into, into CX? Absolutely critical. I think, you know, as a technologist, I tend to, you know, just think of the 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 plumbing aspect of the technology. How do you get from point A to point B? It is the uh, business insights group. Is that that's where the real value and the magic comes? Because you know, and and then powered by AI, where you know you're now able to digest data across you know multiple channels, one hundred percent of the interactions. So very, very quickly, you're able to hone in on, you know, the salient points of that, of each and every in, uh, interaction. So I, I would say the BI, BI is really where the magic happens. The technology is fun, but the uh, the insights group is where the real value is. Being early days in business analyst role, I would say I use a lot of spreadsheets to look at things, right? And it really came that analyst job to try to compare the market or the trends of products and tools and things out there. And what I love about BI and the AI that's enabled within BI today is that you can compare, you know, contrast and compare services and things going on in your industry, within the contact center, within the agent level, and you can really just broaden the strokes of the insights that you can action on. And so I think there's a big difference in what you can do now with the uh, with current technology compared to um, previous days in analysis. 
Yeah, I think, you know, look, Jim and Jim and Michael hit the nail on the head here, but I'll just stress a little bit more because we believe it's critical. We talk a lot about employee experience in terms of the agent serving the customer, but you also have to think about the employee experience in terms of your support organizations. So AI really enables you to give that employee a much better experience where before it would be stressful just going out there trying to search for data trying to figure out what it means implementing ai gives you the ability to really present that actionable data back to the analysts who then can take it back to the business and action on it much faster great no, thanks eric hey guys we actually just had a, a question come in from a viewer so i'll pose it to you all here um, the question is, with AI handling low and medium complexity issues, does this mean that agents will have to deal with high complexity issues? And Jim, I'll go to you first for that one. Yeah, I think you're going to find, you know, that is going to be the natural outcome of automating with conversational AI, either, you know, bots or voice, uh, that, you know, those easy calls are just going to be handled, you know, 24 by seven with the right brand persona uh, before they ever get to the agent. Um, I think you're going to find a couple of things happening now. Uh, and I, I alluded to it earlier on, on talking about some of the tools, you know, the, the agents will be handling without a doubt, the more complex calls, but they're going to be assisted, you know, in, in a number of areas. You know, if you think about average channel time and all the issues you have to go through with authentication, you know, who are you, why are you calling, all of those those steps, you know, now all of that information is going to flow through that uh, that initial interaction with a bot, be it voice or digital, to an agent. So they're they're going to have a complete summary, including of whether or not the agent is, whether the uh, the customer is is annoyed or not, just based on how those um, uh, AI uh, interactions are analyzed. They're now going to land in the agent's lap, but with a lot more context. So the agent's going to be able to uh, get to the root cause very, very quickly. Uh, and I think they're going to be in a much better position now because of AI to handling those complex calls, you know, than they were in the past when it was just a cold call coming in and it was a complex call kind of landing in their lap with no context. Great. Thanks. Thanks. And uh, another, another question that came in uh, kind of related to this um, that I'll pose to you guys. And the question is, how should clients think about striking a balance between agents and AI uh, in the context? And are any thoughts there regarding, um, you know, finding that, that proper balance? I'll take a quick stab at that. You know, one, I would say it's really understanding the maturity of your customers and your company from a digital perspective. Um, two, don't be scared to test. Test, look at the results, tweak, and make sure you're getting the desired outcomes before you scale it across all of your interactions. And that's the beauty of, of rolling out an AI solution. You're really able to kind of increment your way there by handling, you get to define the subject areas that, that your bot is going to handle. And so as your bots start to master that simple stuff with the rest of it going to an agent, you know, you're able to ramp up and improve and Eric pointing out kind of test. Uh, you can do A-B testing to see where, um, you're getting the best responses. And so you can kind of move your way into uh, AI uh, very, very gracefully. I think an area that you're going to see a lot more work in is using AI to analyze the AI interaction. So is there empathy there? Is there a connection with the customer? Uh, and so you're able to do a lot more tweaking and gradually turn that knob to move more and more to self-service without losing any of the effectiveness. Yeah, no, I like that AI for your AI, um, but I think we will we will need to get there at some point. Now, so so thanks for that. Um, so so far we've talked a little bit of high level about AI in the contact center and you know impacts. Um, then we've drilled down a little bit to how organizations should start their journey. But as you all know, there are some risks associated with with AI, um, and there have been concerns regarding 
and accurate outputs and security when it comes to generative AI. Um, how do you all ju- address the concerns that you know CX leaders may have when it comes to um, deciding to integrate AI into their contact centers? If I started from the partnership front, Jim, right? If, if, just just from assessing our partners, you know, one of the, the key things we do is we have a rigorous check, right? We 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 actually we go a repeatable rigorous check to make sure that our partners' alignment to our standards and our standards of our clients are out there. So I just say that that's the first thing we always do. We go through an assessment that goes through a security assessment and making sure that our partners align to the global standards. And like I said, the IBEX standards, and I'll turn it over to Jim. I know Jim, you were going to expand on some of the other aspects we look at in security. Yeah. From a, you know, from a technical architecture perspective, it, it really comes down to how strictly do you control the knowledge that's going to that database that you're linking the embeddings it to so that, you know, you're very strict, you're, you're very much strictly controlling what the bot can respond and you set the boundaries so that the bot's just going to say, well, that's out of my, out of my scope. You know, the second piece is ensuring you're built using uh, LLMs that handle context very well. So you, you can build accuracy as you go along based on how the, the questions are phrased as they go from the general to the specific. And then lastly, it's all about testing. You know, this is where kind of classic IT methodology comes in. You just have to test it. Eric alluded to it earlier. It's it's really around, you know, exercising the model in a controlled environment and then gradually expanding uh, its use. Yeah, and I'll just say to, to piggyback off of what Jim and Michael said, we think about KPIs and associate that directly to the agents or the managers or a particular center. We look at putting KPIs on top of any bot interactions as well. So we have very strict guidelines that we want to see before any implementation, confidence levels, performance levels, response times. Um, so there's very strict KPIs around both technology and people when it comes to IBEX. That's great. That's great. And I think, um, you know, uh, many of the, of the viewers here are obviously searching for, um, you know, the best approach to launching their strategy. If you could give them advice um, regarding any potential red flags uh, that they should be on the lookout for, be it uh, when they're engaging with a potential BPO partner or a technology partner, what are some of the things that you all see that kind of typically worry you that our viewers should be on the lookout for? I'll take the first stab, I guess, here. Um, I think first and foremost, look, our approach is is always a hybrid approach. You have to see where our clients and where their customers are in their journey. And you take a people and technology approach and infuse that into their business to ultimately support it. Um, anyone who just tries to force technology on, on their customers is, is not going to come out on the right side of it in the end. Um, and re- the other thing to highlight, just a customized solution approach. Don't try to go with these out of the box. You can throw this at your customers and they're all going to adopt it and it's going to work tomorrow. Not true. (laughs) You have to analyze that customer experience. You have to map out those customer journeys and you really have to understand where are you going to infuse that technology relative to where your customers and where your company is in their journey. Great. Thanks. And I think you've got, you know, all of the basics, you know, as we look at things like, uh, you know, supply chain hacks and, and such, uh, you know, you're entrusting your data and your customer experience to a vendor. And that requires a high degree of due diligence, you know, around the basics like SOC, ISO, PCI, uh, their data privacy policies, how their infrastructure is set up in terms of is it, you know, multi-tenant, dedicated I mean, these, these are all items that, that come into play, uh, as, as you start to integrate with, with, uh, with vendors. And, uh, yeah, we're starting to see, you know, a much more proactive approach on our, on the side of potential partners around the technology because they, they understand those privacy requirements, uh, 
you know, as, as well as we do. And, and, you know, when we bring somebody on board, you know, we work very tightly security team, to security team to make sure there's uh, no opportunities for leaks. If I, if I just maybe, Barry, you asked for risk, but maybe I would go and say a tip. And, you know, for me, one thing I would say come compliments both with Jim and Eric said here was that you should not look for a company that's going to force you to buy it, to try it. You should really look for a company that's that you know stands behind their product, a partner that stands behind their product and is willing to work with you and put in their environment in within your environment to let you see the results, try the results. As as the, I think the team keeps saying, you know, try, 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 lab it, make sure that it's right for you before you put it into your production environment. And I would say a lot of partners now are starting to see that and being open to that and the willingness to make sure that it's a sandbox environment, that we can make sure we have it right before we make any type of impact into the environment. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And you you bring up something interesting. Um, Obviously, generative AI is the hot new topic, uh, but many of these AI companies have been around for quite a while. Um, Michael, what are you seeing, what's changing at those organizations that were maybe in play before uh, not getting as much attention uh, prior to the launch of ChatGPT? How have those organizations uh, adapted? I would say some of them are are just combining, right? We're seeing even our partners, (laughs) our partners, you know, like Genesis and, you know, Salesforce out there combining, right? I'm glad we're already partners with both of them. Um, But that type of ecosystem now just makes it easier for us to partner, enable, and not have to have so many cooks in the kitchen to get a deal done, to be able to find out how can we make this work? It's already, we're already in under the same umbrella. Now we're just figuring out the new solutions we can do. I think the the only other one I would say, Barry, out there is that we're also seeing partners, um, you know, really showing using the, you know, AI lo- label to things, but mm-hmm. at the same time, trying to show differentiators in how their chatbot goes against them. Everybody has a chatbot, but they're really being able to show you another extra mile, right? Either showing you really the experiment. I mean, Eric and I just went through it where uh, one of our chatbot partners was showing us how, you know, really the experience from the screen of what, it, what the agent would get, what the customer would experience, what, you know, the language translation and putting it back to the customer in the same language the customer originally, you know, started with, but the agent gets it in English or whatever the preferred language they need. That type of, um, you know, being able to be transparent and showcase their products is really the, the AI level that I think you're starting to see from a lot of our partners and a lot of new uh, up and coming partners. That's great. That's great. And something we haven't, we didn't chat about as we were preparing for this, but I think it'd be interesting to get your take on it. Um, When you hear uh, fears from prospects, uh, existing clients, what are some of the the top fears that you're hearing? And then, you know, how do you respond to sort of assuage uh, concerns? And and Jim, I'll I'll go to you first on that one. You know, I think one of the, one of the top fears, and, and, and it's kind of pervasive and, 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 and a little bit generic, is um, what happens if the bot creates a, a bad experience? Or what happens if the bot goes off the rails? You know, who's, who's mine in the store? And, you know, you had, you know, different levels of bot frustration over the years. When bots first started coming out and people were doing, you know, really linear bots, or decision tree bots, you know, they really had the opportunity to to annoy people because you weren't getting where you wanted to get. You know, the financial services industry, you know, was famous, you know, Fidelity put one up, Schwab put one up. But if you tried to ask it a question, it, it really was just a, a, a glorified FAQ. So that created bad customer experiences. Now with generative AI, you have the potential for really bad customer experience. <laughs> Uh, so I, I think that's one of the biggest fears. Um, the other is, is really a concern around if, you know, as you get into personalization and intents, mm-hmm. how does the bot get to the data that's necessary to give that level of personalization? And we find that's often a stumbling block as we talk to companies around doing bots and saying, well, you need an API to get to X or you need an API to get to Y. And, you know, usually you don't have a monolithic 
customer services organization. So there's a lot of internal work that has to go on to enable that level of, of integration that really makes for a successful bot experience. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. And uh, Eric, Michael, any sort of common fears that, that you're coming across? You know, for us, what we've encountered was it, it seems to be this massive undertaking, right? And companies come and are like, oh, I'm going AI. I have to go all out. And what we're articulating to them is, look, you really just pull apart those customer journeys. You can start small, work your way up, prove the success. So it's really getting a partner that can lean in with you and understand where to best leverage the technologies initially and then help you build that, you know, three-year plan, five-year plan. So one of the biggest fears is just where do we start, right? And it's don't let it become so overwhelming just really take the time to assess and analyze where the business in is and then where you want to start injecting it. Yeah. I, you know, the, the funny thing, Eric, I was sitting, I was waiting for somebody to go implementation or something, right? Cause it's always, it, it, there was a, usually the boilerplate ones, you know, how long is it going to take me? You know, who's got to be involved? What's the security control is going to be like. Um, and and I, I love the topics that we hit on because those are, you know, key ones to hit as well. I think the other new one that Eric and I have started to get to is, am I paying for every transaction? How do I, why, you know, how do I know what's a good chat, chat transaction I should get and what's a bad one? Am I paying for all of them? Right. And so a lot more, um, rigor is going behind making sure that there's what we call successful transactions. Did it complete that full transaction or did you know, if it had to go to an agent, those are different, right? But compared to if it was able to take care of the customer complete from the end to end and get them off the phone with a happy experience. So I think that those are, you know, we talked about so many, but, you know, those are fears out there. But I would tell you, um, behind those fears, we have solutions or we already have, you know, best practices to overcome those. Great. Oh, thanks. Thanks, guys. And um, something that you guys have, have referenced a few times here, and we actually had a question come in about it, uh, it's customer journey mapping. Um, can you talk a little bit about the role and the importance of customer journey mapping as organizations look to start integrating AI into their context in our operations? Uh, sure. It, I mean, it, it is absolutely critical because, you know, it's all the customer experience is all about the customer journey. You know, what are the touch points as you think about, you know, customers liking channel preference? So, you know, how do you capture that? How do you ensure they get to the right channel? And that's, you know, it's kind of one of the basics of, of journey mapping. And, you know, then you have, you start looking at different strategies like call deflection. You know, can you move somebody from one queue to the next into an, to an AI bot that would, that may, get to their answer much more quickly. And then you have, you know, what are the friction points? You know, is it a, as you, as you analyze these interactions and now you can analyze, you know, 100% of the interactions, you know, what are the stumbling blocks uh, that prevent that customer from having a, a smooth journey? And you can modify that accordingly. So, you know, without customer journey mapping, you're, you're really just flying blind and you're just kind of throwing solutions up against the wall, hoping they'll work. And you, you actually wind up alienating customers. And it's so easy to switch brands these days. You know, it's used to be if they had a bad experience with a agent, you had the opportunity for churn. You know, it's, it's even more of a risk now if you're having a, 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 a bumpy customer journey through, um, uh, badly implemented technology. And I would actually, you know, add on to that to say, you know, it's funny the uh, customer journey mapping is not, I mean, there's customers that do their own journey mapping, right? I mean, Jim said it right there. When, if I call my experience on my, you know, cell phone over here and I call my, my friend's cell phone or, I, you know, talk to a different provider and the experience is different, I can switch just because I'm doing my own customer journey. That wasn't like that when I was able to, I was able to authenticate and get right to a you know an agent, and I didn't have to go through all this. With you, I had to go through all these steps and stop and get here. And those those are you know customers know what's out there. They know what they can expect to be able to get quick gratification to what they want. And so you know businesses are not able to kind of slide under the covers with it anymore. But you know customer journey mapping is is in the forefront both from the customer side and the company side. Yeah, I would say 
Jim and Michael are are spot on um, referencing AI and just really where it's a game changer relative to customer journey mapping is the AI powered QA. You know, we can listen to 100 percent of those calls without throwing thousands of people at it. Right. And then you really highlight where those friction points are and then you send your BI teams out there to analyze and reconfigure the journey candidly. So leveraging AI through that process makes it um, much faster and much more efficient. Thanks so much, guys. I think uh, it's a great conversation. Um, now, I think it's the time to answer a few of the questions that have come in regarding how IBEX is leveraging AI and kind of our plans uh, to start integrating more AI into our operations. So, Jim, I'll come to you first with that question and talk a little bit about how we've used AI in the past and kind of the future plans that we have in place. Sure. You know, we've been doing AI now for quite a number of years. You know, we started out with uh, post-call survey analytics using BERT, distilled BERT, a lot of uh, uh, early stage LLMs out there to very, very quickly analyze, you know, 100% of the surveys, either audio or or digital, uh, looking for sentiment analysis. You know, the next iteration of that was real-time sentiment analysis around voice calls. And so, you know, because we're doing it on IBEX platforms, uh, we're able to get a very, very quick response rate, high performance. So we're actually able to do um, real-time sentiment analysis back to the agent and back to the supervisor. But, you know, in general, the way we look at AI is, is you know, we, we look at really three high-level use cases, the agent lifecycle, the tools around what the management teams need to uh, have at their disposal to manage the business effectively, and obviously the customer experience. And we've spent a lot of time on the customer experience. And so kind of roll back a little bit into the call center environment where we're finding uh, AI use cases all the way across the board from uh robotic uh, desktop analytics uh, to, uh, and then if you look at the uh, customer agent lifecycle, rather, you go back to uh, how you hire them using AI, how you train them with training simulators using AI to create that iterative process of, of developing that muscle memory, to uh, AI searchable knowledge bases, and then leveraging AI for real-time agent assist and next best action. So that's that's the agent life cycle. Then in the the management stack, as Eric pointed out, you know you have the ability now, as we've um, enhanced both our tool sets and brought in partners. And partners are a critical part of our technology strategy as we integrate them into our our, our WaveX platform. You know partners are able to. Um, you know, focus and specialize in, in one particular air AI use case area. And that allows us to very, very quickly create this ecosystem of AI based solutions. And we leverage those a lot in the management stack where we're able to use, um, uh, QA tools, analyze a hundred percent, drive those insights. And then it really becomes down to how do you operationalize that data? And so as we go through the QA process, we're looking at 100% of the interactions. We're very, we're able to very, very quickly drive that down to the agent level, uh, through our performance, performance management process, create a customized coaching plan and track whether or not that coaching plan was delivered. And then also using AI as part of that coaching and training plan as you continue to enhance your, your, um, agent experience and, and skill set. And what that does is it allows us to get agents to, you know, full competency very, very quickly. It, it reduces our costs and ultimately uh, results in a much better customer experience. And then, you know, we are also using AI around workforce management and scheduling. That's a critical component for us. Obviously, labor is our largest expense. 
So leveraging AI to create schedules based on previous call arrival patterns uh, has really been huge for us in terms of uh, scheduling efficiency. Great. Now, thanks, Jim. Super uh, helpful and high level. Uh, so, Michael, Jim referenced uh, the partnership piece in terms of, you know, some of the things that we're doing from an AI standpoint. Can you speak about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, the, the difference here is that, and then Jim kind of just to reinforce how Jim said it, is that we're leveraging AI, for, you know, our partners for Pacific areas that we need them, right? And so that way we're, we're taking that tactical approach of making sure that they're right for our environment and that they can fit and scale across different repeatable ecosystems, uh, solutions, et cetera. And I said, and that's the same point that, I, and then we're also being able to make sure we find partners that are willing to, you know, test and trial those things in our IBEX lab that allow us to make sure that they, that what we thought and what we, you know, checked up front match the end results and outcomes that we need to make sure our part, our, our customers are successful. So, you know, for me, it's, it's really a ongoing looking across our entire diverse um, ecosystem and also making sure that we don't just have one partner in certain areas. So we're also continually doing audits of our ecosystem to make sure that we have the right partners in the right places and that we have options. Great. Yeah, I think that's a it's a great point to make, Michael. And and just for the viewers here, our strategy is not build versus buy. Our strategy is build and buy. We have a robust IT team of very competent developers that are out there deploying and, and building AI solutions all day long. What we're not going to do is try to build everything internally and recreate the wheel, though. So we're picking a few select partners that we know are top of the top of the food chain in terms of their delivery of their services. And we're integrating them to fill those gaps that we may have in terms of what we're building internally. So it really allows us to accelerate that digital transformation that we help our clients through and uh, deliver uh, savings to them much faster. Awesome. Awesome. So we're, we're at the end of the presentation piece. We have had some some questions come in. Um, many of them are somewhat similar. So I'm going to try to consolidate some of these questions into one question. Uh, and a recurring theme is, what should I expect from my BPO partner? Um, uh, can you all sort of tackle that question? If you could have a kind of a, a list of the top five things that when an organization is evaluating uh, an existing BPO partner or uh, evaluating new BPO partners? What are some of the table stakes items uh, that these organizations should be on the lookout for? And Jim, we, could, we can start with you. Yeah, I, I would say at a base level, a pretty deep level of experience around AI, you know, how it operates within a call center. You really don't want somebody who's or, or an organization that has not leveraged it in quite a while or for quite a while, because you really need to be able to rely on a, you know, cumulative knowledge base of experience around implementing AI, integrating with AI partners, and then really understanding the output of the data analytics that are driven in an AI environment. So, uh, they need a very uh, in-depth point of view around AI as it relates to the contact center and not rely solely on partners to bring that expertise in. That would be my first recommendation. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just tack on to that, and this may sound somewhat general, but we believe it's it's critical not only in our traditional BPO business, but on the technology side as well. And it's just that lean in approach. You really want a partner that's going to come in, understand your business, pick it apart with you and figure out exactly where you should and shouldn't be utilizing it. So that's, that's critical for us. The other piece is continuous improvement. You know, you're not going to get it exactly where you want it on day one, but you need to pick a partner that's going to have all the performance monitoring in place evaluating, tweaking, and and improving it as you go. Awesome. And, well, I, and I think they, they last in, in my mind, is, is they need to be able to demonstrate competency hmm. in specific use cases that fit within, you know, a client's um, 
desired customer experience, right? You don't really don't want to invent this on the fly. You should be able to uh, work with a partner that has done it before. Thank you so much uh, for all of you who have submitted questions. Uh, I know our guys were uh, writing responses uh, during the presentation, so hopefully that was useful for you all. And uh, Jim, Michael, um, Eric, thank you so much uh, for joining forces to be on this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope our viewers enjoyed it. Um, again, uh, this was How AI is Revolutionizing Contact Center and CX Performance. So thankful to have you here for this webinar. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. And as a reminder, a recording of this webinar will be sent out uh, to all viewers and all registrants. And uh, thanks again for joining IBEX. Have a great day.